Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm glad you could join me again today. If you guys haven't been with me before, I am Jay Williams and you are watching Art and Thought by Jay Williams. Today, I'm gonna do something a little bit differently than I usually do. I usually just do acrylic on canvas and I leave it that. But today I thought I'd do a little mixed media and invite this guy into the game. It's a black marker, but I'm gonna use it at the end of the painting and it might be pretty interesting. I've never used marker on canvas before with acrylic paints, so stick around. So today I'm going to be painting a pair and I'm going to use this brush right here to paint the whole thing basically until the end and then we might switch it up a little bit and I'll show you that too. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll do a little time lapse for you probably throughout the piece. Some of it I'll be real time. Maybe if I need to say something to you and describe something to you, I'd like to teach you guys a few things if I can. I don't know how much of a teacher, but we'll find out eventually. Right now, all we want to do is get the shape of the pair down as good as we can. We don't even need to bother by anything else right now. close of a collar as you can to what you want. I want the pair to be bigger, so what I just did isn't gonna be right for me. That's a pretty good shape of a pair. I do have a picture pulled up right here so you guys can grab a picture from online or set up a pair yourself. As a still life would be awesome too. My paint is a little, it's not really thick enough for me right now. I'd rather use thicker paint. <laughs> Might need to edit that part out of the video. I don't know if anybody wants to see a professional artist launches a paintbrush in the air, but maybe, yeah, maybe it's more fun that way. This part is going to be like this. By the end, you can paint over the edges and all that kind of stuff if you really want to. Not even a big deal. But really, since we have the form of it right now, I just want to fill it in as quickly as possible right now. There's a sense of smoothness to a pair. So probably the more brush strokes you do, the better it would look. But I don't really want to do that with this painting. But we'll see how it goes. I feel like with each brush stroke that you do, the direction that you take the brush, if you if you feel like your pair is coming around in 
a, from a certain direction, I guess you would say. Like, if you go like this, it might appear that the, the tear is going in that direction, which it is, you know, from this side. But it's also smooth going down like that as well. But you know that it's rounded off. So, you know that it is coming this way. So, that is going to be something interesting right there. You know at the bottom it's going around and curving down. I don't usually paint still lines and uh, fruit and stuff like that. So, this is interesting for me as is. What we need to do, we need to get a stem in there as well. And we need to play that top part as if something is growing out of it. Because the stem is coming out of the top part of that. For that, you might have to use a smaller brush. But for me, for now, I probably cannot. I probably just stick with a big brush. Because we're not trying to be pros today. Just trying to do something a little different with this. And now a lot of pears have a different color in them. They have a little bit of a red. Which kind of ends up looking orangish, I think, a lot of times. You know, so let's put a little bit of that color in there. Green will change your red to a bit of an orange tone and it'll lighten it up a little bit. But you can put as much or as little as you want in there. The pair that I have here pulled up as a picture does not have any red in it. It's just all green, but I like it. I like that it's different colors in there. Just slightly, you know. Red for the stem, however, is too red. You really would want that to be a brown tone. And put a little bit more green in it that you were already using. And it will make it more brown. What you want to do is probably darken up some of the edges on your pear where you think the light is not hitting. And then you want to lighten up in the areas where you think the light is hitting. So, let's say over here on this side of the pair. No light hitting this. Pear is weird because most of it is this light green and then just gets lighter from there it seems like. It'd be hard for me to add dark to it. But I guess maybe after I put in those highlights, then you'll see what I mean. Over there. 
shadow is probably going to be much darker than that, but we can figure that as we go. And the, and the shadow is definitely going to be way darker the closer it is to the pear itself. So the shadow as it extends out from the pear gets lighter and lighter. Closer it gets, the darker it gets, and you'll be able to see it in this stroke right here, probably. As I add a little bit of red to my blue. I don't really want that shape of that pair to change that much. But you see how it's much darker and closer you get to the pair yeah. so much more easier than that. Alright, let's move on from there. What you gotta do is round this up a little bit probably. And bring it around. We're not gonna worry about it too much as we can come back in later we're gonna take that part out of that. That doesn't make sense there. Either. Um let's see what we need to do is lighten places up in the pair. And we'll get that rounded off look. Go ahead and wash your brush out so you can get a more pure white tone. It doesn't have to be completely white, but the white is here and maybe here. are a little bit in the shape and they're not completely rounded off in any place so you got to think about that apple is more round maybe add some imperfections to its roundness and this pair that's going to lead up as well and put those highlights in there what we'll do back trying to avoid using oils for some time now and at the same time telling myself that that's probably what I need to do. Oil just seems like such a hassle to me for some reason. If you guys use oils let me know how you feel about them and tell me if I'm stupid for not using them or you think that they were tough to use or um, you would rather use acrylics or whatever that would be. Let's see how we got the highlights here. They're not really working in the way that I want them to work.
a little bit of hump right here. Like a flat, like a little uh, further back right here, and then it comes out, starts to come out right here. Too much of that. And then you got your highlight that would probably be right there. In a lot of cases. I keep losing my reference material here and my screen keeps going black on me. And my reference material really is that our basically left that behind all the way up. So I guess I have an opportunity to be able to use it. Unless I want my light switches coming from three different angles. thicker the paint is, the more saturated, the more that color will look deep and maybe a 
sure that it has more structure to it. I'm, I'm like not good with the words and how to explain all of this. Obviously, I'm trying to get better because I feel like I should be able to teach people how to do this stuff by now. I need the help. I know how to speak. disconnected from the other part of the pair and I don't want that to be the case the pair is a little bit harder than I expected it to be I will give it that I feel like this painting could have been considered done a long time ago if I was doing it the right way. And what's the right way? I don't know. since I'm doing something a little different with this. I don't need it to look exactly like a pear and I don't need it to be realistic looking. I would like to lean that way a little bit at least, you know. And I think, you know, one of the things that can do that is pulling in this other collar.
feel like we're getting that little bit of red in there too. It just is going to give it a more real look. Okay. Sounds like I can aim it in that green. You know. Sometimes I have to remind yourself that it is a painting. And people that appreciate art are going to like that it's a painting and not some photograph of something. So it's a pair, you know? That's what it is. in there you could just go complete red with the background Thank you. 
Shoe. Oh, Don't worry about losing your stem in there. Because like I said, well, unless you want to keep it on more of the realistic level, you can leave it like this, actually. I'm going to take a marker and try something new today and go around the outside edges of this. So I'm not going to lose any of it. I'm liking the way that that looks, though. I like that purple, that periwinkle. I called it a periwinkle earlier. I don't really even know what periwinkle looks like, but plum color, I don't know. You just want to get it all filled in. All your background filled in with it. You can leave it painterly. Like, I, I kind of like seeing those brush strokes sometimes. Like that right there, and I think there's a little bit of that. I think that would look kind of neat. You can do it differently if you want. Obviously, you can flatten it out. Look how you want to look. You can put some darker tones in there. They don't all have to be as light as what's over there. Then I had our pink already. It's probably right, mix enough paint to where you don't have to remix because when you have to get into remixing all the time you are not gonna be able to match that collar that you had before. So it can mess mess you up. You don't want to 
keep it that collar. I just earlier I wanted to lay it in for you so that you could tell what I was looking at as far as how that how it was gonna sit on something. But we'll change it up with a dark purple basically since we're using this light purple on here. anything this painting at least has some pretty collars to it you know what I'm saying turned out now we could just leave it at that it'd be fine but I don't want to not today Have a real light touch when you do it though. Barely touch the canvas basically. Want that to be come out a little bit more. The dark part of it to come out a little bit more down there. shape than others that will finish up that part of the painting 
Now, should I wait till it dries to do the marker part? I believe I should. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wait for it to dry. And then I'm gonna do the marker part of it. So, I'm gonna put you guys on pause. And I'll bring you back to show you the end of it, I guess, right? The very end. So here's the finishing touches to the painting, maybe the moment we've all been waiting for. Whether or not we totally mess it up or it looks cool, let's find out. I already started here. I should cut it off right there because it gets so dark down there or just leave it. right around it. <clears throat> Guess I'm not very good with using a marker. Using a marker should be the easiest thing I did. Usually it's a paint press that can give you trouble. Actually, let me know what you guys think about it, and we'll go from there, I guess. And thanks for watching, guys.